MovieWeb.com. You two met on the set of God, your short film, is that right? That is incorrect. Yes, we actually well. met on the set of Go, which was um, a movie that I wrote, that Doug Lyman directed, and Melissa was cast to play a small part. You play it, what's her name, Sandra? Yes. Sandra. So she's the girl who answers the door when Jay Moore and Scott Wolf are looking for the guy they're both stooping. <laughs> and, and she was great. And so I, I, I saw her audition and I Did saw her. Did I meet you in the audition room? Like in a blur? I think in a blur. I think technically that's where So I at. actually met her in a blur, in a dream. And, uh, <laughs> and then she was great in the actual scene, but I didn't even see you shoot your scene because we shot it at like 3 in the morning. Yeah. And, it was strange. And wh where did I bump into you again? Then I ran into you at co the Coffee Bean on Melrose. And you said, and I was, I couldn't believe that he actually remembered me. Like it's a small part. And you said, so you're like, I think I have a, I have a short that I've written for you. And then my eyes just went to like saucers. I was like, what? And I read it, and that was God. Yeah. Isn't that what happened? That was what happened. So I wrote a short <laughs> film for her because I loved her so much in the movie. I knew I wanted to make something else with her, and so I wrote this movie for her. So the Margaret character in chapter one of this film is an extension of the character from God. Is that correct? That is correct. Mm -hmm. And so how? F I mean, I, t I sat down with you before we started. Um, before I started even really writing it. And what did you think the movie was when I was describing it to you? Certainly not what it was. Like, it was much, uh, I knew that it was going to be an extension of Margaret, and I think you'd said, like, maybe this would be 10 years later, which is about right, um, and where she's gone, and kind of what, what that person with that relationship with God has become, even though I think in the nines it's not so much about God, but, you know, there's still a, a prominent relation there. But I didn't think it would be, it would be as complicated in a delightful way as it is, but. Did I warn you then that you would be playing yourself in the movie? You, I can't, that's what I can't remember if you actually, did you? I don't know if I did. I know I it's really. I feel like because when you gave me the script, then you said there's a part in it you'll probably want to discuss. And I was like, <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> and then I read it and I got to the second part and it kept saying Melissa McCarthy. I was like, oh, maybe he hasn't named the character yet. And then I thought, if I never met John, he's not, <laughs> put something in the script that isn't finished and exactly what he wants. And then it was talking about Gilmore, and then it was like, your husband, Ben. I thought, so obviously when I called him, I'm like, let's talk about that second part. So but, what was the decision to actually make it a real character as opposed to a fictional character in the film? You know, the movie is about a creator's responsibilities to, to his creations. And um, I really wrote myself into the second part of the movie. The character's name is Gavin. He's a TV show runner. Um, a guy responsible for keeping a television show on the, the air. And that was my relationship with Melissa. I had written a TV show um, called DC, and Melissa was cast as one of the, the main people in the show. And she sort of ended up getting trapped into this really downward <laughs> spiral of a show. And I felt this tremendous responsibility to my characters that I created, but also to the actors and friends in the show. And um, I figured if I was going to be you know, honest, including myself in the story, I really needed to include Melissa as herself in the story. Well, towards the end of the movie, we get into the video game programmer's life, and I'm wondering, is this sort of a commentary on gamers and people who get stuck playing these sim-type games and the dangers of that? I ended up playing way too much World of Warcraft. That was my sort of main crack addiction of um, video game hood. And it's so compelling um, when you're in one of these games because there's such clear objectives and goals. It's like, oh, if I just can get, like, if I can just harvest, like, you know, three more bales of Thunderleaf, um, then I'll be able to sell them at the, at the marketplace. And uh, in real life, it's just so complicated and so messy, and you never know where you're at, and you never know what level you are. And there's something so clean about a video game um, that it was a really good metaphor for what the characters were experiencing in the movie. Now, we see that fight in a restaurant. Is, was that based on a real experience between you two? Later today, that's going to happen. No. No. <laughs> we, uh, we, never actually never, we never come to sort of harsh words. No. Um, I think, you know, I think some of the the stuff that comes out in that fight is certainly backstory that we have and that like I was really responsible for some of um, your early work and yeah. you know and you know I've always felt this tremendous responsibility towards you but yeah, uh, and the and the weight of that and it, there was a weird kind of a weird surreal thing happening cuz so many things that were brought into that second part of the the story like were really happening and like there's stuff about like us buying a house and I hadn't really thought about different things that were coming up because some of it although there was you know quite a quite a specific structure a lot of it was you know improvised and uh, there's a very strange thing when you're talking about you know if I never work again if this goes away I'll lose my house as like on my lunch break I'm signing you know papers for a new house and John would like anything we talk about he, he suddenly would kind of put a little bit more into it like yeah talk about that ask her about the house and 
it seemed funny until like later I would think about if I never work again, I really will lose my house. So it was a it was a lot. Uh, I don't know. It was really interesting. I've never obviously yeah. I've never had my real life kind of brought into a story. I was really keen on sort of smudging the lines between what's inside the movie and what's outside the movie. 